Hi, it's Joni. Um, I haven't done an update in a few days. Honestly, I've been feeling kind of like crap. Um, I'm sorry, I got the table shaking. I am going to go through what I can like remember the past few days. Um, I'm going to talk about stuff like poop. So, if that's TMI for you, scurry on along to another video because this will be one with stuff like that. Um, I know I look like a hag right now. Uh, I just took my hair down. I just woke up. Finally had some sleep. Um, that's been a big problem for me. I haven't had any sleep. I'll just scoot this back. I might shake some more. Um, I haven't had any sleep. Um, it's really difficult sleeping on my back. Um, I was trying to sleep on my stomach some. Uh, but it was making the pain I was having worse and worse. I'm still having pain. I don't feel like I should be. Um, and it's all coming from this one. Let me see if I can show you. This one. Well, crap. It's right here, basically. And it's from the biggest incision. Mine had staples. Other people's have had stitches. And I've heard different things. Mm. But the majority just of it is. I thought I was herniating it or something. Because I even felt it sort of pouching out above it. Like the shape of my hand. And it hurt and stuff. And, um, and I had been doing things I felt like maybe I wasn't supposed to. Like I would... The first two days, I bounced off the walls so bad after I got home um, that I was literally up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. There's, um, I, I think it's possible that, you know, they say you walk as much as you can and everything else. I think it's actually possible I might have done too much because I had so much nervous energy. I couldn't set down. So what I did do during those couple of days was I tried to lay on my stomach a lot. And then I would push myself back up off the bed and my belly would be hanging at the time like unsupported when I was doing that and so I was really worried I had herniated something but the doctor mm. said actually when he puts that in it doesn't go straight in where you think it does it goes straight in and up at an angle and that's why I'm having the pain where it is and that's why they're swelling where it is it is not a hernia which I was worried I was getting a hernia um so, when that started happening, a couple of things happened. Um, I went to the bathroom, mm. like my third or fourth day post-op. Probably third. Um, how do you know how much is the right amount of bathroom after a surgery? Well, the truth is, you don't. You're drinking liquids. You know, the biggest consistency I had had at the time was a protein shake. Um, you're kind of cleaned out ahead of time so you don't know how much you're supposed to poop what it's supposed to look like what it's supposed to feel like how much is the right amount how much isn't so I pooped that first night and basically it was like a squirt of mushy sediment in the toilet um, harder to clean up than it is to get out. Not at all hard to get out, okay? Feel like you have to fart, and then boom, mm. you have to poop. Thankfully, I've had no accident yet, knock on wood. This is hard wood. Um, so, that being said, I had pooped, you know, in the first couple few nights and so I thought well you know I'm doing good I have made some poop out of this um well within a couple days I wasn't feeling very well um and one of the things my doctor told me was you know everywhere in my books that he gave me and stuff he told me to begin with was you have to chew or liquid your pills or crush them for the first month. When I was leaving the hospital, he said, if they're small, you can just go ahead and swallow them. Um, or, you know, break them up if you want. So I have this one pill that I take. It's called Trileptal, if anybody is interested in knowing. It's used for seizures and for mood disorder. Um, mm. Well, my account is both. 
Um, and it's not a huge pill, but it's a pill that I need to break up, I think, into four pieces. And so I'm supposed to take one and a half of them. Actually, more, but right now I'm having my dose of mental meds while I'm getting back up on them. Um, and so I would ha make it into six small pieces. Well, they were small, but they weren't like other pieces of medicine. Like, normally, they, like if you break apart pills, they'll crumble or they'll start to disintegrate when you put them in their mouth. But these were just solid pieces. Um, and they weren't like extended release or anything. It's just the way they're made. And... Uh, I would get a couple of those in my stomach and feel like instead I would feel like they clogged the drain basically like and it would hurt and I got to where I was not able to drink as much water and I feel mm -hmm. like that maybe some of those little pieces got to the bottom there and like instead of dissolving and you know being a little bit there or whatever going down the drain if you imagine like a mentally a bathtub drain this is what I did like these you know is a small bathtub drain and these when they swirled around all they did was swirl around and basically sit back together and make it difficult for everything else to exit the drain so um that's the way I felt my belly was getting more distended. That place on the left side over here was getting really big, you know, compared, you know, for me, feeling miserable and hurting extra. I called the doctor's office. They were like, oh, the receptionist is like, if it's in such and such area, you know, this is common, um, we'll give you to the nurse. So I left the nurse a message. The nurse was like, calls me back. She's like, okay, so... Remember those last papers we got where we told you to buy milk of magnesia? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, did you buy it? And I was like, well, actually, no. Um, before, a little more oversharing, before I had the surgery, I was actually worried I was going to have constant diarrhea because I already pooped for whatever reason in life, like five or six times a day usually. And it was usually loose and like messy. So I thought for sure I was going to have diarrhea like crazy um turns out so i didn't buy the milk bag so mm. turns out um i needed to poop so i took milk mag the first day and you know normally you want to drink you know i'm a nurse so i know um you know you want to drink as much water as you can when you have milk mag but now everything in the world is different because you're stuff has to sit in your pouch longer to absorb and mm. not just shoot through your body the same so I did have a BM that first day and then another one that I, f I felt like I had but my daughter said was just like something on the wipe because I still can't wipe my behind um, there's a big confession that's the biggest uh, non scale victory that I hope to achieve through all this is independence in I haven't wiped myself in like almost two years. It's either my daughter, my husband, or occasionally my mother. Um, first, it was due to a very bad back problem. And then once that was resolved, it was due to my weight. I couldn't, I physically couldn't reach it. I have short arms, you know, it, it just, I've tried all kinds of appliances and different ways. You just can't imagine, but it, it's, it's terribly it's been terribly embarrassing and humiliating and the one thing that I don't talk about you know it's a very private mm -hmm. thing nobody wants to say hey I can't even wipe my own butt and somebody else has to do it but that just tells me that I have a very strong loving family I have a I mean my husband loves me more than it's it's the purest sweetest love ever when he met me I was young when we got married I was young I was 17 going on 18 when we got married I had like a perfect 36 34 36 hourglass figure beautiful girl I know you can't tell under this but trust me I'm talking like I was in pageants and stuff beautiful girl um and I know that she's in here you know in the mirror and I think I'm a much more beautiful person inside now. But what I'm saying is my husband has mm. loved me through all of this. 
not just beauty, you know. It's, he's always felt me beautiful. He's always wanted me, you know, intimately, no matter what size I've been. And so that has been the greatest blessing of my life. Because what kind of man wants somebody that's thin, still loves somebody just as much and acts, you know, wants them just as much and never says, I want you to have surgery because you embarrassed me or because you're fat. He just said, I want it for you so you can be healthier, so you can live longer and be with me longer. I'm the greatest husband ever. Just, and I feel bad for anybody that's having to go through this that doesn't have the kind of support that I have because my husband is wonderful support. I have my family, my children, my friends, friends from out of state. You know, everybody is just championing me through this. And then I see people that don't have it. And I wonder how they get through it. Because it's so mentally taxing. And if I'm crying, it's because I cry a lot right now. Um... And from what I understand, everybody cries a lot right now. But, like, I saw people post on, like, bariatric forums that they don't have any support people and their friends say terrible things to them. And I just couldn't imagine going through this without as much as I have. Without the support that I have. Because it's taken everything I have mentally to go through it. Even with them. So... Um, anyway, the next day I took the mocha magnesia and I let it just sit on my stomach without drinking the water. And I went like seven or eight times that day. It was still nothing more than like sediment in the toilet. It's just one little pfft and like liquid sediment in the toilet that got liquidier through the day and was just messy to clean up from me. Um, but not like a lot of volume at all so that's all i know to tell you about like pooping and the right amounts or the wrong amounts i'm still learning um and they said you know once you have more food on your stomach you'll be able to you know get to more stuff like that but um you know once you have heavier stuff on your stomach your digestion will improve. You won't have to be taking milk and magnesia and stuff. But um, I've definitely been taking milk and magnesia about every day mm. um, since that happened. Um, now I usually go four or five times a day. But like I said, again, it's just basically kind of like the feeling that you have to kind of like fart, but you don't trust it. And you feel like there might be a little something there and then it's just a little in the toilet and then that's it. Um... So, I definitely have given all the private stuff out in this information. Um, I've been mentally starving. And by that I mean, like, I don't even like a lot of the things that I'm allowed to have on this phase two. Which is basically, like, try and drink all your protein shakes that you're supposed to. Water... Crystal Light, which I used to love, and now I can't stand all of a sudden. Um, sugar-free popsicles, and, you know, my friend went and bought me sugar-free popsicles, and then I looked on the back of it, and in my book, because I have a book mm. um, that my doctor put out, I'm well informed on what to eat and what not to eat, and it basically, it's like, avoid these lists of sugar names and sugar alcohols. And sugar alcohols was a big one, because it's like xylitol, mannitol, sorbitol. Most of it ends in an all, and then the last one is isomalt, I think. Because those can make you um, have dumping syndrome, and, you know, they're not good for you. So I got the popsicles. I was like, oh, I can't even have these popsicles. So we finally found some um, through research and help from, um, like, a bariatric pal online thing. Um, I posted the question and found out that I was able to have those. Um, and you are 
you know, I am able to have aspartame. Mm. It's just all according to, like, a doctor or a, or a, or a um, nutritionist personal philosophy. Because I saw some people saying they weren't allowed to have aspartame. And I think it's because some there is a lot of controversy about it in the media over whether or not it's good for you, bad for you, whatever. Um, it has no bearing on the surgery or like making you sick or anything like that. But some doctors or nutritionists feel like it's not uh, something you should have in your life at all. So they tell you not to have it. Um, I've seen people post questions about what vitamins to take. Um, I'm taking, uh, Flintstones vitamins, two of them a day. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I tried the generic from Walmart. And this is one place that you don't skimp because they tasted, oh my God, horrible. Um... They told me next time to get it with iron, even though I no longer menstruate or anything. They said that's the newer recommendation. Um, there's a lot of stuff I went through today. Oh, I had my first pre-op appointment today. Mm. Um, I found out I didn't have a hernia. That I'm basically normal. Um, that everybody's going through the same emotional roller coaster. In one way, shape, or form, and that it's it's not just the day or two a roller coaster I thought it was going to be. It's going to be um, definitely a year of roller coaster, um, but it's you know it's a lifetime. It's just that the roller coaster evens out to a smoother ride um, with fewer hills and valleys the further out you get. Um, but so. I guess everybody wants to know the first question is how much weight have I lost um, and the answer is 14 pounds um, I weighed today uh, on August the 11th as surgery on the mm. first the first the last time I was weighed was on July 21st at my pre-surgical appointment when I was two days into my pre-op diet and no I did not cheat at all um, but I, I've lost 14 pounds. I expected to lose more than that. My body feels like, and my family notices different things, and I do too, um, that I feel like I've lost more than that, but I think that maybe next time it'll show on the scales more. Um, I'm not really that worried about it, but I'm under 400 pounds, but the biggest things to me mm -hmm. is that it's kind of a walk into my doctor's office. And because of my back problems, I'd been using a wheelchair for a long time. And because I'm fat and I get out of breath. Um, and any time I've ever tried to walk in there, I've had to stop and stop and catch my breath. And But mostly I come in there in a wheelchair. Well, I walked in there today, wasn't sitting there trying to catch my breath for five or ten minutes afterwards. Um, then I had to pee when I was there. And I went there, and the toilet's kind of lower, and it's oblong, so it's made in a better position for a fat person to try to pee and wipe. I mean, the only thing I can explain to you is that you got to be able to spread your legs apart. And I was able to lean over and wipe myself from my pee for the first time in, like, two years. So those two things were the biggest victories for me today. Um, then I found out after I had my staples out, I was like, when can I have a you know, bath or get in a hot tub. And he's like, you can do both mm. anytime you want to. Anytime you're ready. Um, I was planning on coming home and having a cheese stick with marinara. And going to get in my mom's hot tub. I didn't sleep at all last night. I was miserable today. I had a headache today. Other than being happy at the doctor's office, I was miserable today. I came home to eat the cheese stick and found out that, you know, I'm talking about string cheese. Um, I actually had room for about a quarter of a cheese stick in my little bitty pouch. And this sat heavier and it was more uncomfortable. It wasn't bad, but it was more uncomfortable. And I was whiny because I was hurting and my head was hurting. My sugar was 156, which surprised me. 
um, cause I started hurting almost like I would when my headaches would get, when my sugar would get up like by 200. So I actually gave mm -hmm. myself two units of Humalog insulin today, um, which I hadn't had any insulin or anything like that since I had surgery. Um, the doctor ordered me some more pain medicine. It's liquid Lortab. And let me tell you something, you have to be in some serious pain to take this crap because it is vile. I would rather, I can't even tell you the different things I'd rather do than drink this stuff, but it is so nasty tasting. It's enough to gag a maggot to me. I can't stand it. In the hospital, it was even worse. It tasted like a shot of alcohol and you can only take small sips. So even though you might have like two or three tables, uh, teaspoons of it, it takes you multiple drinks to get it down. And then multiple try to drink some little bits of water and whatever to get that damn taste out of your mouth. The darn taste out of your mouth. And it, it's, oh, it's bad. Mm -hmm. So, you definitely don't want the pain medicine unless you're having the pain. Especially because it can lead to constipation, but honestly more because it's nasty. Um, but I had to have some more written for me again today, which is actually the second time. Um... I was surprised because like some people I've talked to have said that you know they don't really have pain and haven't really needed their pain medicine and that part surprises me a lot um I don't, I don't know I thought there was something wrong with me but then you know when I posted like online that I'm still having pain you know like 10 days out people are like I had pain for like a month for weeks I had pain at my first post-op appointment don't worry. So, apparently that's, you know, pretty normal. Everybody's body is different. Um, you're no bigger wuss or less of a wuss or whatever mm -hmm. because your pain threshold is different. Because your nerves perceive things differently. Um, you know, your pain is your pain. Um, and that's something I learned in nursing school. Um... Trying to think if there's anything else I need to add. I had major non-scale victories. I had pooping problems. I laid here sick as a dog, feeling horrible for a couple of days. I haven't had tr I haven't been able to sleep that well because I'm not a back sleeper. I'm sleeping on my side really sucks. Um, it hurts kind of um, to sleep on my right side. Sometimes, sometimes not. My husband snores loud. I mean, I would too if I didn't have my CPAP on, but. Like, if he gets to sleep before me, like last night, he was asleep before me. My friend's phone, she's here, mm. she's out in the living room, kept clicking every time she received an email last night. And I swear, like the entire country of China emailed her last night. And so all of her little night was click, 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 click. And I was like, dude, we have got to turn that off because I'm going to die. I'm going to throw it out the window. It's just, it's all there is. Little things annoy me easier and quicker. Um... Those are the major things I can think of right now. I'm excited to be on the next phase of my diet. I feel better because I got some sleep today, finally. Um, I'm trying to think of different things. Every day, you know, they're like walk, walk, walk and stuff like that. That's important because you have to keep your circulation up. I think there's a point where you can do too much. And I think I was there. Um, and I think that there's a point where you can do uh, too little and, and cause bodily harm to yourself. But I also think that there's a point, like for me, I've had surgeries before. This is not my first rodeo. I've had abdominal surgeries before. I had a hysterectomy where they... They opened me up from my belly button to my pubic bone because my uterus was really large. Um, so I know my body a little better as far as pain and when I can and can't move. And there's there was a couple of days that, you know, I spent the better part of my time in bed and not walking. I don't advocate for that, but I'm telling you, if you know your body, you know your body. 
So, I went from nervous energy and posting yeah. YouTube vids to, like, in non-communicado, like, asking for prayers. And I've had a lot of people praying for me, and I appreciate that more than more than anyone will ever know. Um, it's been a rough few days. Today is August 11th, 2017. That makes me 10 days post-op. And these are my confessions for the day. Might think of some more tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be better about posting videos again now. That I'm not feeling so bad. But that's just an update for everybody. Um, I don't even know what I'll call this. Um, TMI confessions or something. Anyway, like, subscribe, comment, watch it when you want to, share it with your friends, tell everybody all about, you know, my journey with my too much information. I'm putting it out there as a reminder for me and as help for somebody else because mm. like I saw videos and everybody was it seemed to me like in their 200s and that's where I want to get you know I'd like to get down to 200 but people that are in their 200s to me didn't seem that big I know everybody's big you know what I'm saying they have their own set of problems and things like that but I wanted to see somebody my size going through stuff um, I don't know that I found that, but maybe I can be that. Maybe I can be the person that answers the questions along the way that people are scared of. Um, so, anyway, there's my TMI post. Sorry it's been a few days. Mm. Not sorry, because I've been hurting, and you got to take care of you first. So, that's all. Joni's out. See you next time.